of the Artigal Art, a London-based contemporary art platform supporting emerging artists. So together we're curating Prevent This Tragedy, it's our fourth exhibition and it will be located at Post Institute by Von Goetz Art in Brixton. So we founded the Artigal Art in 2017 when we arrived to London and it started as a response on discovering what was happening in the emerging arts scene today. Um, we found that online there was not much information about emerging arts. Um, usually the artists spoken are always the same names. Um, big artists, male. We wanted to, to find things that excited us, our generation of artists. So we started uh, visiting artists, interviewing them, writing blogs, and um, it developed into curation. This is, a, this is the fourth show that we curate so far. Firstly, we started with the Spread the Virus, which is an online-based exhibition. Then we go, we went for uh, the Pink Panther show, and after that, the Home Alone, which was an exhibition based in our house, in our home. Now, with um, Prevent This Tragedy, we're exploring an industrial site, uh, the decay, the materiality of this place. So it's quite exciting, uh, curatorially, to approach all these different sites and um, explore placing art in environments which you don't usually see art as we're usually presented with a white gallery space with a final work but we're very much inclined in seeing the work in a different context and um, a context that we can all relate to some of the artists to work on site and creating these site-specific works. So um, Prevent This Tragedy will showcase works of nine artists, many of them who respond to themes of tragedy from the ar anthropological to the architectural, gentrification, displacement, um, image making in society, other contemporary issues like um, the death of painting or um, some of these artists explore them through um, gravity, things, um, objects which are uh, precariously installed, um, they almost um, seem as falling or detached, um, tension, um, there's ruins, decay, death, uh, humanity. We've got four artists doing site specifics, Simon Linnington, um, Francis Richardson, Jim Woodall, and uh, Andrea V. Wright. My name is Andrea V. Wright and this is my work Laplace Transform. The piece is basically an accreted latex uh, surface that's been painted over time with various layers and then peeled off to reveal the accreted surface. The light underneath is neon and it's responding to the industrial elements of this site. The piece has um, a sense of its dynamic trajectory 
as I've peeled it off, that it's folded and just lightly layered here over the steel structure. This area and these buildings are known for their um, use in industrial component building, and so this steel piece is responding to that industrial nature of these kinds of buildings. It kind of um, emulates a sense of a, a, an architectural skin, and the accreted surface has all those phenomenological aspects of the place in the sense of the peeling paint, the damp, the, uh, the sort of moss that's going on here. Everything that, that's on that surface has been peeled off and has this sense of a kind of ghostly image of the original surface. Hello, my name is Simon Linnington and we are at my studio in Greenwich, South East London. For the show Prevent This Tragedy, I'm showing three pieces of work. Two pieces from a site-specific installation called Not To Be Trusted. And the third piece is called Souvenir 2018, which will be exhibited in the main space uh, alongside the other artists. The um, piece in the main space, Souvenir 2018, the, the year is part of the title because it's uh, an ongoing series called Souvenir, which I think the first one I made was in 2014, which was a, a tube hung on the wall, and it contained studio detritus and um, historic artworks of mine which were broken down crushed, sorted into colour, size, uh, like, like the colour stratus in a, in a cliff. F for, this, for this show, um, I'm putting the same studio material but into a vitrine so we have much wider uh, length of material. So they have the freedom to move more throughout the thing which is containing them. The, the reason I began using um, broken down materials in tubes for a souvenir was um, as a young person I grew up on the Isle of Wight and I would walk around the the beach because the island is surrounded by beaches walk around and kind of just look at the cliffs and I'd walk for miles and miles it's uh, 70 miles all the way around and the Isle of Wight is quite famous for its different coloured sands so in the cliff you see these different stripes throughout. Um, my family, they, they used to own shops which sold uh, tourist souvenirs and these were the coloured sands taken from the cliff, famously Allen Bay in the, the west end of the island and um, it just sort of occurred to me one day when I was, I was drawing with chalk actually and l sweeping the dust off the ground that um, that it looked a bit like the coloured sand. So that's when I first decided I would try to use the material in, in that form, kind of a deconstructed form. For not, not to be trusted, the two elements, the bucket and the cloth, is part of this continuing theme of the mind and body duality. The bucket is representative of the mind, the bucket containing the water and the cloth of the body that that water has in it, like our mind, a certain memory. So everything that has taken place in that space is contained in that water used to clean room. I'm Frances Richardson and uh, for Prevent This Tragedy I'm showing two new pieces of work which are installed in the gallery. They're made 
from concrete canvas. I thought it was a perfect opportunity to use them uh, for a site-specific installation, especially in this building, which is brilliant. I do like the fact that it feels like a working space still. You know, that it's got that energy to it. Um, I think what's really exciting about showing in a space like this is that it allows you the potential to be um, slightly experimental, but also you can work on a, on a large scale without too much um, administrational infrastructure going into it. So the titles of the piece, um, they both have the initial title performed object and then the date in which they were made. And um, it's something that I kind of developed a way of working with the material, which um, sort of demands a, a performance when you're working with it. So it, it, it's flexible, it comes on a roll, and then um, you can make a shape with it, and then you wet it, and then it sets hard. So between the time of unrolling it and its setting, is like an orchestrated performance. I'm Vasilis Asmakopoulos. I'm showing three pieces which are called sulfur slabs that are um, on the wall and uh, one more which is called downer uh, which is on the floor, <laughs> appropriately. Um, the sulfur slabs essentially uh, are uh, made from soundproofing foam that is then enriched with resin and it solidifies and then uh, sulfur in dust form is applied on them. They seem to reference in some way sort of like maybe minimalist or very strict sort of modernist um, sculpture possibly, um, and they have a, a bit of an alienating sort of uh, appearance. As for Downer, it's, it's essentially a found um, textile type of uh, uh, chair, which uh, part of it is removed, the, uh, the legs and everything. Um, it's got a weird kind of, uh, again, maybe very modernist type of uh, shape and uh, uh, I would say quite sensual even though it's from a very very big sort of furniture retailer um, from Scandinavia <laughs> but um, it, it, it's left outside it's collected mold um, um, and then washed again and the mold has essentially dyed the textile naturally uh, upon that is a small sort of um, mounds, if you will, uh, of uh, marble dust. Um, and it seems, it seems, even though it looks very pure, um, it, it seems to have a bit of a, a weight to it. And um, so it, essentially when I named it Downer, um, it, it was not because it was on the floor the initial reaction to when I did it was more psychological um, because the downer is, you know, obviously you're not feeling very well. So it seemed like it was sort of grab at the pit of your stomach in some way. Hi, my name is Evie, and we're here at the Bomb Factory Art Foundation in my studio in North London. Um, so this work here is called Sisypha. It's something I made originally just over a year ago. And it's part of a larger body of work that looks at sort of material synthesis and how we seek to replicate stone in contemporary society and mostly explores the validity of stone, so why, we, why it's so important to us, why stone has almost a reverent quality. And for me, it was always interesting to find all these various replicas to make stone out of plastics and polystyrene and polymer-based materials. So I started creating a 
selection of fake stones, so looking at this topic of materiality, but also creating them in a way that was reminiscent of traditional forms of sort of stacking stones like cans or the sculpted figure, often the female figure. And eventually it brought me to make this work, which is, well, it's called Sisypha, like the female version of Sisyphus. And it's a bit giant polystyrene rock on wheels strapped to a base and it's drilled into the base, but there's a strap that will run round it eventually um, to make it look as if it's just strapped and it's a rock being carted around. And um, it's more, it's not, it's a sculpture in itself, but it's also a prop for a performance piece. So wherever it gets exhibited, it is the duty of the gallerist, the female gallerist uh, or the gallery assistant to take it out for a walk down the high street or down the street that the gallery is on every day. So uh, the myth, myth of Sisyphus that inspired the work, it's, it's quite complex and initially when I started making the work I was referencing my memory of the myth, which was that a guy, a human, a uh, mortal, was punished to eternally cut or push a rock up the hill. And the moment um, he gets the rock to the, nearly the top of the hill, it slips off his shoulders and falls down. And it's this eternal job that he needs to do because his only salvation is when he pushes the rock to the top of the mountain. He never quite achieves it. So for me, the work really looks at that burden of humanity or of mankind and us carting it around. Also, on why I called the stone Sisypha and had, in a sense, put the female as the leading figure now, sort of carting this burden of mankind, trying to change paradigms. Uh, my name is Jim Woodall and this is a piece of work called Part which was created for the Prevent This Tragedy show. It's a concrete wall and kind of an architectural intervention into this space to create um, a part of a building that could collapse throughout the exhibition. So it's a kind of forced entropy in some way. Um, it's the chem there's a chemical process within it, which is um, calcium oxide and ferric oxide, which when pushed into the concrete, forces it apart. So it creates a, a resistance between the material and the insertion of the chemical. I like the play between um, a, a material or a process which is intended to create strength and that I'm adding this weakness to it. And the weakness creates a instability and um, a kind of anticipation for its collapse. And I think that crux or that moment of just before collapse is what I'm interested in, in working with in some way, either as a performative element or as a, um, just a, an idea to explore. Mm -hmm. 